he always returned my call, mine and Laura's. That's why I waited to the end to call, to call Laura, because I know if he had to call her back and something was right, because he always called me happy. Emotional testimony from the mother of NBA star Lorenzen Wright. Then, after her testimony, an exclusive interview with Court TV. Plus. She said, um, it's him or me. Like, what do you mean? He has to get on me. He has to be gone. Family friend says Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife admits that she planned the murder. Did she actually think that she was also some sort of target? Live testimony resuming this morning in Memphis. And... I didn't understand how we got from stable to the ICU for continued care to he's dead. Emotional testimony from family members of those that died under the care of Dr. William Husel. More testimony from Ohio this morning. It's all ahead on a busy Wednesday next on Court TV Live. Good morning. It is a busy day here at Court TV. We're juggling two murder trials in Tennessee. Testimony resumes in about two hours for the trial of Billy Ray Turner. He's accused of murdering NBA star Lorenzen Wright back in 2010. The prosecution claims that Wright's ex-wife, Shara Wright, solicited the defendant to carry out the shooting. The defense claims the real killer is not the defendant but another man who's already in prison for murder. And, of course, we're watching the murder trial for Dr. William Husel in Ohio. He's accused of killing 14 of his patients. The jury is expected to hear more testimony this morning from friends and family members of ICU patients who died while in Husel's care. Testimony in Columbus begins uh, in a few minutes. As soon as it does, we'll get you into that courtroom live. But let's begin in Tennessee. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter is in Memphis with the latest on the Billy Ray Turner murder trial. Hey, good morning, Ted. The long-awaited trial against Billy Ray Turner is now underway here in Memphis, Tennessee. And yesterday, during opening statements, the prosecutors told the jury that the defendant himself was recruited by Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife, Shira Wright, to murder. Billy Turner was somebody that Shira Wright could trust, manipulate, and use. The defense pointed the finger at a man named Jimmy Martin, a cousin of Shira Wright, who allegedly owed her something. They give him a permanent get out of jail free card. Sign this. They signed a contract like you go in and buy a car. They signed a contract. No matter what you say, if it changes, if it weaves, if it bobs, there's nothing that we're going to do to you. Authorities say Jimmy Martin led them to the murder weapon, and he is expected to be a key witness for the prosecution against Turner in this trial. Now, the prosecution's first witness in its case was Lorenzen Wright's mother, Deborah Marion, someone who has never stopped fighting for justice for her son. May have been his number one fan. Did she stay his number one fan for all that? Today, that's the alias. The jury started hearing more about Shira Wright's possible motive for wanting Lorenzen Wright dead when her cousin Claudia Robinson took the stand and told them what she overheard between Shira Wright and the defendant. And Shira was just irate saying Lorenzen had a hit on her. She had been told that he had a hit on her. Like a hit like the killer? Yes, sir. Billy Ray Turner sat stoically throughout the day, taking notes on a yellow notepad. He has pleaded not guilty to first degree murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy. Of course, in 2019, Shira Wright pleaded guilty for her part in the murder plot. But when Lorenzen Wright's mother spoke to me after court, she expressed that she believes Shira played a more direct role in her son's murder. Do you think Shira was one of the ones with the handgun that shot Lorenzen too? Yes, the bullet in his face. I'll say that to the day I die. To the day I die. And Deborah told me that she hopes that Billy Ray Turner spends the rest of his life behind bars because she herself is doing a life sentence without her son, Lorenzen. Ted, coming up today, we are expecting the detective, Jesse Browning, to retake the witness stand to be under cross-examination after revealing a lot of new details from that crime scene. I'll send it back to you. Our thanks to Chanley Painter. She'll be in the courtroom all day as well. And again, we're expecting testimony to resume about two hours from now in Memphis. Joining us now, trial attorney Michelle Thomas. She is in Silver Spring, Maryland. And Commonwealth attorney Anton Bell is in Hampton, Virginia. Good morning to both of you. Appreciate your time on this Wednesday. 
Michelle, the, uh, when, when testimony resumes in, in Memphis, we're going to have this detective back on the stand, and this is the individual that really has brought the crime to life, the crime scene to life. Um, Cross-examination is going to uh, begin. And also, he is starting that connection between the two things that the jury has to have, and that is a connection between Shara Wright, the wife who admitted to engineering this whole thing, and the defendant, Billy Ray Turner. There are some texts there, and then also the trial the plan uh, some text also there um, were brought into evidence how crucial is connecting um, ex-wife Shara who's admitted her involvement to the defendant for this jury good morning Ted it's critically important to the state's case to ensure that they can connect those dots for the jury and show particularly because one uh, Shara has already uh, pled guilty and so you already have that scenario. So to the extent that they can tie this defendant to the co-conspirator um, in this case, uh, that will essentially help to seal the deal for the jury and in, in, in the conviction that they're seeking. Um, you know, this is a, it's a tangled web that we've seen here with a lot of moving parts, but uh, we have had some compelling testimony already. And as these pieces come together, I think the jury is going to, um, you know, there's certainly a lot there that they can say that this is beyond a reasonable doubt that this defendant was in fact connected and responsible in part for this killing. Anton, as a prosecutor, do you like a tangled web? Actually, I do because uh, juries, they, they love the, the drama that they normally see on TV. And so when you have a tangled web and you're able to unravel it and begin to put the, the missing pieces together for this puzzle, for this jury, and they can follow it along, I think they enjoy it. It keeps them awake and it keeps them uh, engaged in the prosecution or the litigation of this case. So I, I kind of enjoy them. Overall, Michelle, uh, we've heard the openings. We've gotten a few witnesses. What is your take in terms of the hurdles that the state's going to have in this case? Well, I mean, obviously here there was no direct, um, there's no direct evidence of the, or witnesses to the actual crime. Um, there's certainly the hurdle of the defendant casting the blame and trying to uh, shift the blame to someone else saying that he was not directly responsible. We also have the hurdle of there's already a, a, the co-conspirator, um, Shara, who's already pled guilty. Um, and is serving her time um, already. So they have other options and all the defense has to do is show that, there's, that there is a reasonable doubt that he was not in fact the person who either pulled the trigger or was associated with this crime. And so when you already have other persons that they can blame, um, whether it's the, um, the person who's already incarcerated saying, oh, I know who did it, you know, Turner's involved. Those are, there's moving pieces there as well where they can say, the the dots aren't quite <clears throat> connecting and adding up. Therefore, there's a reasonable doubt. Here's Memphis Police uh, Detective Jesse Browning, who will be back on the stand as soon as they resume testimony, talking about a potential connection between defendant and ex-wife through text messages. There were a series of texts also found between Shara Wright and Lorenzo Wright beginning on all along 717, the day before Lorenzo Wright was killed. Yes. Um, generally, I don't need you to read them, but generally described to me uh, what Sheriff's text to Lorenzo is about. Explicit, I guess, text messages telling him that she wants to sleep with him. And where does really she correct. want him? Do his text messages indicate where she wants him to come? Uh, to Memphis. To Memphis? Yes. Uh, for sexual reasons? Correct. To her? Yes. Are they able to find evidence of a text message from Cheryl Wright the night of this murder? They are. Are they able to find evidence of a text message from Cheryl Wright to Billy Turner the night of this murder? Yes. Are they able to find evidence of a text message from Sheriff Wright to Billy Turner about 25 minutes before that 911 call is made? Yes. Uh, and are they able to recover the substance of that message? They are. Who's the sender of the message? The sender is going to be Sheriff Wright. And who receives it? Billy Turner. And what does the message read? 
I'm gonna need my commission. You need to speak out. I think, uh, I, everybody. I'm gonna need my commission. Ren want you to bring your cards in the in the AM before you fly out. You owe me, boy. Anton Bell, that uh, connection is crucial that uh, right before the murder, these two are talking via text. Um, that's that's a, uh, difficult to get around if you're the defense. On the other hand, they're not saying, hey, let's go kill Lorenzen. And, um, you know, they could be friends in text. It doesn't mean he, he was the trigger man. Your thoughts on the effectiveness of this and what we should be listening for today during the cross-examination of this crucial witness. So, um, yes, the text is absolutely crucial because what you have now is you have Shira Wright, who has already admitted her role in this homicide. Now she is communicating with the person that's on trial, basically saying, OK, I want my commission and you owe me boy. Now, when you put it in just a silo, then it may not mean much to the average person. But when you connect it with the other dots, when you put it as a piece of the whole entire puzzle, then it absolutely makes sense in context. Because now you're saying, I want my commission for helping set up this murder that you executed for me. So it absolutely works for her. Now, when it comes to the defense attorney, they can say, well, there is nothing in those texts that directly says he was involved in this murder. In addition, the texts are coming from Shira Wright and not from Mr. Turner. So they can be able to make the argument that he had no role in this. And although she may have wanted him to help her, he did not. And there's no evidence linking him to that fact. Michelle, this doesn't seem to me like a case that we're going to see the defendant on the stand. What are your thoughts? I agree with you, Ted. I, it's not one of those cases where he needs to defend or put on an affirmative defense of self-defense or anything like that. I mean, in this particular circumstance, the evidence they have is circumstantial. Um, there's no direct eyewitness to say that he is the one who pulled the trigger. There's already a co um co-defendant who's pled guilty. And so there's really enough there where the defense can create or concoct uh, a storyline where there's reasonable doubt. So this is not a case where you would see the defendant. And also him on the stand would just raise too many questions uh, and probably open the door to avenues that I'm sure his defense counsel does not want opened. Yeah, we'll see where how it plays out again. Testimony expected to resume about two hours from now.